Today, I want to speak about this little device right here in my hand. If you put this little device in your onboard diagnostic port on your vehicle, then that means that a man in Springfield at four, uh, 1445 Boonville Avenue can be monitoring my motor and he can be basically from his computer screen in sync with me. And what does that mean? That means that when I go through Crown Heights and I take this shrink wrapped Habodnik Bible and I toss it all, all over the, the area, if there's a 25 mile an hour speed limit, uh, then guess what? Uh, he will know that and he can monitor not only me but the whole fleet of automobiles and that means I can lose the uh, use of the vehicle. Now this kind of sync, this kind of, 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 of being in sync, this is something we don't know about. The, to, to just get plugged into God's mind like that. And, and, and you see, there are many people who dismiss the book of Daniel because they think it's just uh, from a naturalistic perspective, uh, doing uh, history after the fact and calling it prophecy. Because there's no way somebody could know all the stuff that he knows about the Maccabean period, and therefore it must come from that period. Well, friend, I have news for you. It comes from the period that Ezekiel, a contemporary, is in, the sixth century. And how, you say, yeah, but how could Daniel be that famous uh, as a contemporary of Ezekiel that he would speak of him uh, as a famous man uh, when he was his own contemporary. Well, friend, let me tell you something. I had known the Lord exactly three years, and I, I knew nothing. I took suitcases of books, and I went into a motel, just like the Lord checked me into the Wishing Well Motel with 23 cents. He checked me into a motel in uh, the San Fernando Valley, and I dictated this book. Here I was, a novice believer. I'd only been a believer for three years. I dictated this book, and as a result, I became famous. I'm in this book here, Evangelical Dictionary of Theology. I'm in this book here, uh, Missiology. I've quoted all over the world. Just Google Missiology Philip Goebel. That means nothing to be famous. Fred, don't tell me how famous your ribby is in Crown Heights. That means nothing. That means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I was a nobody. And I was, and I got famous. Big deal. That, that and 25 cents won't even get you on the subway. Now, look at this book right here. I want you to look very carefully at this book right here. Look at this verse. Look right here. It says, uh, Ribby, you are the Zunfunder, Zunfunder Eibister. This is found at the beginning of Johannan. And at the very end of this chapter, uh, Yeshua augments this by, by referring to himself as the Bar Enosh, who comes to the Atik Yomin in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Now here is somebody who is legitimately famous, my friend. This is a real ribby. You see that word right there? It says ribby. The ribby, the ribby. This is the ribby you should be looking at, friend, because his bones are not out at Old Montefiore Cemetery. He is alive. Hallelujah. Go to afii.org forward slash afii.pdf and get this book. And then go to page uh, 548 and read about uh, this guy. This guy right here, this, 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 this particular scholar, Gleason L. Archer. He did a survey of the Tanakh. He also did uh, the uh, commentary on Daniel in chapter, in actually volume seven of the Expositor's 
Bible commentary uh, published by Zondervan. Also, get this one. This is uh, the uh, IVP, InterVarsity Press, commentary on Daniel. Yes, because you have to understand something. You cannot read the Bible until you've had a real turnaround. Now, this guy right here, he got a, an intellectual turnaround. His name was Anthony Flew, and while I was in seminary, he was debating everybody. He was the great atheist. Then he writes this book, There Is a God. <laughs> How the world's most notorious atheist changed his mind. This man had a intellectual hey, fey, final cough. That means it's a Hebrew word meaning to be changed. He was changed intellectually, but that wasn't enough. My dear friend, you have to be changed morally. You have to be changed morally. Now in 1969, when Collins, Aldrich, and Armstrong were headed for the moon. I was headed for hell. I was in Little Rock, Arkansas doing uh, a, a summer, summer stock, and, I, and I, was, I was a lost man. And the Lord was trying to show me how lost I was. Uh, and and, and I, I was caught up in an anguish like Rav Shaul, the Talmud of Rabban Gamliel, the Tana, and, and remember, he describes it in Romans 7, 21 to 24. I knew the right, but felt powerless to give myself over to the right. And so I needed a moral, hey, fey, final cough. I also began to know the terror of God. I knew I wasn't ready to meet God. I knew I was foolish and ignorant and like a brute beast before the Lord, Psalm 73. And my question to you is, have you come to that point yet? If not, you are not a candidate for salvation. I was nearing the point where I knew I needed a moral, not just an intellectual, hey, fey, final cough. That's what you got to have, friend. And until you do, you're going to be worshiping some dead rabbi in old Montefiore Cemetery. And you're going to be the blind leading the blind. And, and, and it's not going to help you to, uh, uh, to be the vanguard of a great uh, Jewish uh, people movement if they're all go falling into the pit. Yes, if they're all falling into the pit. I want you to look at the book of Daniel. Look right here at this book. Look at these Hebrew words. I'm, I'm trying to explain to you the key to understanding these Hebrew words. You must know that Daniel was plugged in. He was plugged in. And the God who knows the future, the God who knows the end from the beginning, the God who knew about the, uh, the Maccabees in advance, the God who knew about Antiochus Epiphanes in advance, the real God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who he was plugged into. And for this reason, he was in sync. And God could speak to, to, to him. One time, the Lord wanted to speak to me because a man that I was trying to disciple was getting ready to commit suicide. And he was going to do it that very day. The Lord threw me into a trance. And then he spoke to me to call him. And I did. And the gun was in his under his bed and he was ready to commit suicide that very day because because I because I got a heads up from the Lord because I was plugged in because I was plugged in you see this I was plugged in when are you going to get plugged in friend you're not born again you got to get born again I was nothing I was nobody but I got plugged in by the grace of God when are you going to get plugged in by the grace of God that's my question to you my friend and then when you do get plugged in you're going to want to read the book of Daniel oh yes you're going to read you're going to read the whole Megillah you're going to study the book of Daniel and at Hanukkah time, just like at Purim, you read Esther at Hanukkah time you're going to want to read Daniel the whole Megillah Hallelujah. 
And, and so I'm, I'm trying to speak to you today about the Ribby, the real Ribby, who stood up alive, hallelujah, on the third day. His body did not see Shahat, Psalm 16. No, in his kever, in his grave, he saw Or. Go back and look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, the great Isaiah scroll, and you will see that. This was written a thousand years before the Masoretic text that you look at all the time. Also, go back and look at the fragments of the book of Daniel in the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. And let the scholars who have, no, who have studied the Aramaic and know what Imperial Aramaic is, and, and know that this book is real. It's really from the 6th century, whether you understand it or not. It's really God's word. Hallelujah. Th then, you, then you see, you will be delivered from a false hope. There is no hope in a dead ribby. There is no hope in a dead ribby. There is no hope in a dead ribby. Today, I'm speaking to you about the Ribby, the real Ribby, the one who can save you, the one who made the Kippur for you, the one who purchased your Geulah redemption with his Padut, full ransom price. Hallelujah. You don't have any redemption in any other Ribby. And I pray today that your Hebrew copy of Daniel will look like that. And I pray today that you will turn to the Lord. And I pray today that when you look at Yohanan chapter 1 and, and you hear uh, the, the, the disciples say, Come with us, we have found the Ribi, the Zunfun de the one, the one that Moses speaks about. That, that you will say, what? When, where does Moses speak about him? Baratheus 3.15, Baratheus 22.18, Baratheus 49.10, Baratheus 18.18 to verse 22. Yes, and then when he says, the one that's in all of the, 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 the prophets, all the prophets spoke about, you'll go to Yeshayahu, chapter 4, verse 2, chapter 7, verse 14, chapter 9, verse 5, chapter 53, verse 2, chapter 5, verse for verse 2 of Micah, uh, Zechariah 6, 12, Zechariah 9, 9. You will look at those scriptures. And, 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 and the most important words you will ever read are Kine Xarme Eretz Hayim Mi Pesha Ami. These words right here, my friend. And, uh, and I was called by Elohim Ha'av, but I was also called by the Ribi. Study Gevurot Me Ruach HaKodesh, chapter 9. It was the Ribi who called the persecutor and founder of Jews for Judaism, Rav Shaul, the Talmud of the Tana, Rabban Gamliel, and his Kariah, uh, Kof Resh Yod Aleph Hey, the actual work of his calling, hallelujah, took place on the Damascus Road. Hallelujah. And that's what you've got to know about. Don't look at the words of men. This will not save you. Your, your, uh, your death will not make an atonement for your soul. You are a sinner who deserves to die with all of Adam's children. But there is someone who was born of Ha'alma who died in your place. Tahat for you. He is the ribby. We're going to tell the whole world about the true Ribby. We're going to point to the Ribby. And when I'm going through Crown Heights and I'm tossing these Bibles everywhere, I'm, I'm going to believe God that the Shomrim will be blinded. They won't be, even see me. I won't have to break the speed limit. They won't have to chase me. And I won't be... Uh, uh, on the computer screen in, in, in uh, 1445 Boonville Avenue so that they want to take the, the car away from me so I won't have my car in the fleet of cars. But God will help me. God is going to help me, my friend, because this is his ministry. 